In this video, I'll do a quick run through on the basics of WardCam. Uh, we'll be looking at the newer version of WordCam, which I have over here on the right. And then if you've worked with WordCam previously on the left, this is how the uh, older version of WordCam looked. The uh, newer version has the uh, darker color scheme. And a couple other little differences. Down in the right-hand corner, you have a button to toggle between Imperial and Metric. So if you know that you're going to be opening up a file that's in Metric, you can just click on this and then open it up and then it'll be properly sized. And then a uh, newer version of WordCam, you can open up both DXF and DWG files, where a previous version of WordCam could only do DXF files. And then uh, another difference between the new version and the old version is new version uses uh, online activation to activate it, where the old version used a um, USB security dongle to activate it. So. Uh, you can download this onto however many computers, and then somebody from uh, WarJet will log on and activate it. So those are the, the basic differences between the, the new and the old. So if you're new to WordCam, then uh, all of that doesn't really matter. So this is the main screen when you first start it up, and before I actually get into things too much here, if you do need additional help, want to see some additional videos, on our website, wordjet.com, you can go to the support area and then down to support videos. And if you scroll down a bit, you'll get into some of the uh, the WordCam videos. Uh, so a lot of these ones are the older version of WordCam, but uh, the functionality again between the two is basically the same. So uh, until these ones get replaced, you can still look at these and get a good idea of how things work. Or if you go to our YouTube page, so go to YouTube, search for WarJet, come to our WarJet page, and then you can go to playlists. And there's um, WordCam tutorial here, which has uh, half a dozen different videos going through the different steps. Again, these are the older version of WordCam, but these will slowly be replaced here over the next few months. So some areas where you can get some help. So when you first open up uh, WordCam, you got two choices here, Shape Library or Open. So click on Shape Library, and there's some parametric shapes that you can choose to uh, make a part that way. Or if you prefer, more likely, you might have a DXF or DWG file. You can open that up and bring that in here. So let me just navigate to where I want to be here. All right. So we've opened this up, and I'm in Imperial mode, and there's no direct measure tool in WordCam, but down here in the lower left-hand corner, you can see the XY coordinates of the cursor. So if I hover along this left line here, I can see that my X is about negative 178 and a half. And over here, we're at about 364. So that indicates to me that this file is probably in metric, because that would be quite large if that was in inches. So if I've got two choices at this point. I can either switch over to metric and then reopen this. So I just close it and then reopen it. And now that I'm in metric, things should be properly sized. So the numbers will be the same, but now these would be millimeters. The other option, if you don't want to switch to metric, if you want to stay in imperial, let me close this again and reopen it. is over on the left here, we have some various editing commands. And one of these is a scale function. So for any of these commands from move on down, if you want to use any of these, you have to select items first. And this button up here is my select, indicates that my select tool is currently active. So if I left click and then I drag my mouse and then once I've got everything surrounded, let go of that left mouse key, and then everything is selected. So it's the basic way that things are selected in WordCam. If you drag from left to right, it's got to be entirely within the box. If you're dragging from right to left, it only has to be touching the box to be selected. So, uh, And then you can also hold down your control key to select multiple things. Or if you select something that you didn't, didn't want to select, if you hold down your control key, and select again, you can deselect things. 
So in this case here, we want to select everything, and so I'll left click, drag around here, and then if I hover over here, this is my scale command. Click on this, select base point for scale. I can just click wherever, and then I want to scale this down. So I can either just start typing on your keyboard, so convert from millimeters to inch, 0 0.03937, and click on OK. And now this should be appropriately sized for inch mode. So if I hover over here, we're at about 39 and a half, and that's about 60, which is correct for this part here. So at this point here, if everything else is good, top right hand corner is how we basically step through the process. Right now we're in the geometry screen, and there's four total steps to this process that we'll go through. So you can just hit this next button, and that'll take you to the next step in the process, which is now we're on the part screen. At any time, if you want to go back to a prior step, you can either use the back button, or you can just click on the step that you want to go to. So if I were on the tool pass screen, which is the third step in the process, I want to go all the way back to geometry, I can just click on that geometry button and go back and forth between those steps. But we're not there yet, we're on the parts screen here. So parts screen, most of the time what you'll be doing is selecting uh, the machine and the material and thickness that you want to use for this part. And usually this is going to stay set unless you change your nozzle orifice combination. So if I'm going to cut this out of uh, steel and I've got a 50 horsepower pump and I'm going to cut with a 1440 nozzle combination, I've got a machine setting for that. And then click on this down button here next to material and I've got the material that I can select from, so we'll say it's going to be stainless steel, and then I can choose a thickness. And then in other videos, we'll drill down a little bit deeper into these different databases here, but if you click on the database menu up at the top here, you can go into your machine and material databases. So if I click on machine database, it'll bring me into here, shows me all my available machines, down here at the bottom, you can either add or remove machines. So if there are machines that don't apply to your situation, you can just highlight it and click on remove. And then for whatever machine that you've got selected, over here on the right, you've got information related to, first of all, the name, which can be anything. And then uh, your abrasive nozzle size, your orifice, your abrasive flow rate, your pressure, and things like that. And then normally this button is turned off when you first come in here. And if it is, then none of these things down here are visible. But if you turn on this advanced button, then these items down here are visible. And in here we're telling it where we're looking for our post processor and variables and such. And then down here you've got your start point for your machine. So if you've got a machine where your zero zero point is lower left, and that's where you want to set your nozzle when you start your parts. You can just click on this little image here, and it'll toggle through the four different options for your start point. And then your end point, we usually set that at the opposite corner. So we would set this typically upper right-hand corner for a machine that's got zero, zero lower left. If you do change any of these things at any time, say for example, you decide that you're gonna run your pump at a little bit lower pressure, uh, you can just type in the new pressure, and then what you always want to do to get that change to actually take effect is down here, click on this Recalculate Material Values button, and then your feed rates will be adjusted based on whatever parameter that you adjusted up here. And then you would click on Save and Exit, and that com brings you back out to here again. So that's the machine database, and then also there's the material database, and in here, you can then go in and see things like, again, the name of the material, the thickness that you're working with, uh, the machinability, which relates to the uh, how fast this material will cut compared to steel. Steel has a machinability of 1, stainless steel 0.9, which means it cuts about 10% slower than steel. If you look at something like aluminum, you'll see that that's set to 2.9, so that cuts about 2.9 times faster than steel. Down here below your listing of materials, you've got buttons to add material remo or to uh, remove material. So if I was cutting 516 stainless steel, 
I can just highlight one of my stainlesses and click on Add Material. It'll make a copy of whichever one that I had selected at that time. And then you can come up to your thickness box, type in a new thickness, and important is that you click on this Calculate button so it'll recalculate these feed rates, otherwise it'll still be the quarter-inch stainless feed rates. And you'll see that those numbers changed based on that thickness and the machinability and then all those settings that we had in the machine settings. And then for each thickness, each material, you've got five different feed rates from slowest, smoothest up to fastest, roughest. And then on each of those, you have a high speed and a low speed. And the low speed is what we're slowing down to on corners. And then the high speed is, of course, what we're trying to accelerate up to uh, when we come out of a corner. And then if like I did there, you think you might have screwed something up, you can always just click on the Calculate button and it'll set it back to what it was. If you do manually overwrite something in here, so you decide you want to 9 and 3 instead of the default values, um, so you, you, know, you go through and you customize these numbers depending on what you're doing. There's this uh, lock button here, you can click on this, and then if somebody clicks on the Calculate button, it won't reset those. You can, however, still click into here and change things if you want. And then if you do want to reset things, turn off the lock button, click on Calculate again. And then this fragile button here would be if you're cutting something like glass. So if we click on one of the uh, glass materials here, this fragile button is um, turned on. And what that does is on the next tab over here at the bottom, right now we're on the Feed Rates tab. If uh, you go to Leads tab, when this fragile button is turned on, then what we'll do is use a uh, straight line lead-in versus a circular uh, lead-in. So let's go back to our stainless. And then for each, um, again, each material, each thickness, you can define inside lead-ins, outside lead-ins, other lead-ins. And again, there's some other videos where we'll delve into these some more, so I won't spend too much time on these right now. Um, if this advanced button is turned on, then you'll see information about angle of lead in, angle of lead out. Also, when the advanced button is turned on, you've got the ramping, marking, and other tabs that are visible. So we'll just click on Save and Exit. So if I go back up to my pull down now, I've got my new material here, my 516th stainless. And then that, that's what you do most of the time on this screen here. There are other options over here where if you're doing uh, open contour cutting, for example, if there was a line here that you just wanted to cut as a slit, uh, that's what you can do with this uh, open contour cutting screen where you can just click on that line and it starts adding it to your uh, cut sequence here. And then hit our next button. Top left-hand corner, most of the time, you just click on Auto, and it'll add your toolpath. So up here, we've got our full toolpath now, that open contour that I just programmed, plus each of these represents the cut in a part. And as I click on these over here on the right, then it will highlight which cut that is in the part. I've got buttons down here that I can use to reorder things. So if I wanted to do this cut after this cut here, I can find it in the cut sequence and use this arrow and move it down. I can change the feed rate on different uh, geometries. So if I um, wanted to cut this open contour at a different speed, I uh, can't change that in this screen. That would be changed at the prior screen. But uh, if you wanted to cut this hole here at a different feed rate, you can highlight that and then come in and choose a different quality. If you want to do multiples, I can hold down my control key and then I can go and select whichever ones that I want to change and then come over to the quality and choose what quality I want to do those at. It's also the partial qualities. Expand this and I can choose a different quality and I can click two points and then I just hover my mouse to indicate which portion of that contour that I want to cut with this different quality. So if I want to cut this at a different feed rate, I can just then left click and lock it in on that portion of that cut there. So basically click, click, 
and then left click to lock it in. You can change lead positions. So if uh, over here I wanted to change my lead position on this cut here, I can just left click and change my lead position. And then <clears throat> once you're happy with your toolpath, top right hand corner, hit your next button. And then in this screen, most of the time what you'll do is just top left hand corner, hit the CNC button. Uh, this screen you can also change your start point if you want to. So right now our start point is at the lower left hand corner of the part. If you wanted it at a different corner, you can just hover around and because over here on the right, we've got these different snap options turned on, it'll highlight different places that you can snap to on the part. So if you want your start point to actually be bottom right-hand corner in this part, you can just see that little bounding rectangle around the part, and you can click to a different start location. But We'll stick with the default at the lower left. So most of the time, you'll just click on the CNC button, and then it opens up this window where you can choose where you want to save the file. And if you have the option turned on, <clears throat> it'll open up your CNC file so you can preview the code if you want to. If you don't want to see that under this options menu up here, you can uncheck this and it won't open that. And then after you create the CNC file, click on this report button, choose where you want to save the report, it saves it as the HTML file. So it'll show you information as far as where the file is saved, image of the part, nozzle orifice combination, size of the part, material and thickness, uh, box where you can type in any notes, and then estimated cutting time, as well as a barcode, where if you purchase our barcode scanner option, the operator could just scan that barcode, and the controller would automatically load that. So that's the basic run-through on WordCam. Again, there's some other videos on our website that go through those steps in some more depth. If you have any questions, let us know. Thanks.